Let's pull a transfer case. What the? What? Great. That was a pain in the butt, but I got the case out, so start tearing it apart now. Mine's an older 231, so I'm gonna have to press these uh, cage needle bearings out of here, which I knew was gonna be a thing, so I'll just put it in the press.
I had to trim this down, so I went ahead and did that while the case was split. It was 10.2 inches, and it says you got to cut it down to 9.38. So I did that. Got the new shaft on, and I think we're ready to start going back together now. And I got the mating surfaces really clean, as you can see. Looks good. All right, slip hook limiter's in, everything's reconnected, and both drive shafts are in, loctited and torqued. Uh, I'm gonna wait 24 hours before I put uh, ATF in the transfer, transfer case, and I'm gonna check the transmission fluid level in the uh, automatic too, just to make sure it's good. Uh, Cause some leaked out around the rear main where it 
where the output shaft is for the transfer case when I took it off. So I'll get all that done tomorrow. I'll let that RTV set up really well and then fill it up. I'm a big old grease ball again, but I'm glad to be done with that. That job sucked. I didn't like that at all, but it wasn't too bad. It just took a really long time. All right, it's been 24 hours since I put this thing together. Just took it for a test drive, it runs, it drives, it stops, it starts, it flexes really good. Uh, we went to a couple of uh, ditches and just, you know, kind of got it in there kind of, you know, crooked so that it would flex out really good on each side and it looks great. It doesn't seem to be rubbing crazy anywhere, uh, it's not making any funny noises. Uh, the speedometer doesn't work and looking at the photo I took of the transfer case before I took it out it looks like I didn't put the speedometer gear back in correctly so I'm gonna go back under there and redo that really quick but other than that everything seems to be okay it did grind when I put it in four low for the first time um, so I don't know if that's just the at, you know the spot that I had stopped at or what it wouldn't go in all the way so I put it in drive and was pulling on it and it grinded into four low so not sure what that's about but it only did it that one time and it didn't do it after that when I, you know, shifted around a bunch. So it seems to be okay. It's just that one is just kind of weird. So I'm going to keep an eye on it, keep an ear out for for problems. But I think it's okay. I think it's going to be fine. I don't see any leaks at the moment. I'm going to keep an eye on that too. And the transmission was about a quart and a half low. So I filled that or topped that up. And it uh, seems to be okay. So I'm going to mess with that speedometer cable now. All right, it is actually officially done. I had that speedometer gear section in, in a different orientation than it came out. And I'd actually realized that after I put it in that it wasn't in the same exact way that it came out. But I thought, oh, it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. Apparently it does matter. But I adjusted that little piece. I just turned it like 90 degrees or whatever. And um, now the speedometer works perfect, just like it's supposed to. So I just took it on another test drive. It rides so smooth compared to how it used to. There's no crazy vibrations anymore. It corners a lot better. It stops a lot better. It's just the suspension being brand new, the new slip yoke eliminator with the new drive shafts and everything. It just, it feels so much better. It's so hard to describe. I've never been more pleased with this YJ or any YJ that I've ever had or rode in. Um, it's just, it's really, really nice. So that's it. This thing's ready for Moab. I'm going to go over it a little bit, or go over it one more time before we put it on the trailer. Just like check fluids, uh, you know, check all the tires, make sure they've got all, you know, air in them. I run about 20 PSI all the time with these tires, so I'll uh, make sure they're all at 20, put it on the trailer, strap it down, and then we are ready to roll east for Moab. Finally.
So our next videos will probably be this thing at Moab with a couple buddies. I've got one buddy, he's coming, he's got a four-door JL Rubicon on 37s. And another buddy who's in a chopped, stretched, one-ton TJ on 40s. So obviously I'm going to be by far the smallest Jeep on this trip. But, um, you know, with the front locker and the way it's riding and set up now, I'll be able to do, you know, trails like Hell's Revenge and stuff like that without without any real problems. But I'm so happy right now.